Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm excited to announce a new visual that's in preview that has come out from Miguel Myers and the visualization or Power BI core visualization team at Microsoft. Now it is a new visual that will eventually replace the single value card visual that's been around for years. And there's a lot of new enhancements and features to this. Now this is just the start of many new things to come. Miguel has been helming a lot of new features and updates for the Power BI desktop and the visualizations in there, which I've been really excited to be a part of and to be able to contribute. So I wanna walk us through some of the new things that we can use in this and how we can actually turn this into a Trellis or multi-card visual as well. So with that being said, let's hop into Power BI and get started. Now the goal of this video is to walk through this new card visual that I'll show you how to turn on in preview. Now with a lot of my other videos, including this one, I leverage many of the things that I've built previously. So just to give a little bit of context of some of the other stuff I'm using and to mention the related videos with the tutorials for some of these extra features. As an example, one thing that we have here in this card visual that we're going to walk through just in a minute is we can see that we have four different cards here, but also check out the value that's showing right here. At the moment, it says 9.6M with the downward KPI arrow. And if I change that as an example to video equipment, you can see that that is scaling down to 446.3K. So that actually is being driven by a measure. But if I open this up, this formula that we see here was actually covered in my auto scale video. That was a previous video that I did a few weeks back. So I will link you down in the description to that. But that is what I'm using in here to get the scaling. And then I also, from that same video, have an option to actually adjust my decimals from here all the way down. And you can see that every card is changing on this. Both of those are covered in the previous video that I mentioned where I actually walk through how to apply this auto scaling format, not only within a measure itself, like you can see here, but it also covers how you can do the new, if we were to pick a base measure, the new format string, which actually gives us an option to do dynamic formatting as well. So both of those are covered in the video, check the description down below, but I wanna mention the context of what is used in this new card visual from that perspective. But jumping into the tutorial now, I'm very excited about this visual. Essentially, it acts like the single value card that we see over here, but with some additional features that are available for it. To start with, notice that the data well allows me to add any number of calculations into here. So starting from a single perspective, I can add just a single calculation, but kind of like the multi-card visual, I'm actually allowed to add as many individual measures as I would like to, and then configure each in turn with different formatting options. So that's where the power of this new visualization comes in, is it will eventually depreciate and replace the single value card as long as it has all of the initial features that that had, but with many, many more options. And what I've done here is I've created kind of a KPI card. I've applied some rounding, some formatting between this. I have a data label at the top, a label below it, Plus also I'm incorporating a spark line, which I will mention in a second, but that as well was something I built out earlier this year or enhanced once we had custom SVG sizes for tables, but that's actually being rendered in here. This is an SVG image. So technically any SVG image that you've used can also be included into here. So I'll walk through the setup of this with each in turn, but I wanted to mention some of the things that I'm using in here. And finally, you can even see that there's conditional formatting where if I go between different years, you can actually see that if I was to find something, there we go, with a positive number, it goes from green to red to show those variances with an up and down arrow. So let's start from the top and just talk about the card design. As long as you have one or more measures into here, it will automatically card it out. And if you come over to the format pane and we go into the layout here, you can actually see where you can decide and determine which direction the card's gonna go as far as any of that layout might occur. Now, I went with vertical in this case, but you can basically choose the alignment and the grid with there, some space in between cards, and things that are actually not that far removed from how buttons would be designed. So similarly, in the card section, we get all of these settings such as fill, border, shadow, glow, and I'll get into images and accents bars, but very similar design to how a button object or any of the bookmark navigator or page navigator visuals would be designed. So many different shared features and applications between those that were added into here to make it seem very familiar. And we have similarly the callout that was previously inherited from the original card visual. So my values, which is at the top, that is my callout value. That is the standard formatting. Now a couple 
mentions in here, a really important one. Check this out, show blank as. That is something that is new for this particular visual. So anything you put into here automatically gets added to the card whenever the DAX measure results otherwise in something that's blank. Now this is a big game changer, I'd say, just for this one feature for cards. Many of you have probably had to do hacks and DAX over the years where you do a plus zero to the measure or something else to get rid of the blank word that shows up in cards because we had no way to address blank values. So I'm super happy for just this single feature, let alone all the others that I'll show as an addition to this, where you can put in anything you want as a custom value, whether or not it's a zero or any other custom alphanumeric character can be easily added in here. And Additionally, you also have an F of X button to even grab at a dynamic value that could be fetched from a measure specifically to go into the blank values. Closing out of this, continuing with the call out section, we have the label as well. So that's the thing that goes into the middle at the moment. And we have a few options, but for the most part, not a ton of design elements that go into here, mostly just the decision of whether or not to put the label below or above the value, depending on your preferences. Now, the thing that really makes this stand out, I would say, outside of standard formatting is when we come down to cards, we have the option to apply settings to, and notice, similar to buttons, we have a option to do for series all, or individually for sales, prior year, year over year sales, or year over year sales percentage. Now this is where a little bit of the extra effort comes into play when you're designing this. Now, each one of these actually has an extra or separate SVG DAX measure being rendered for it. So there's an SVG to render a spark line specifically for my sales amount in here, one for my prior year, one for my year over year and one for my year over year sales percentage. That's actually contained if I was to open up my SVG folder here, go in a new KPI card, I have a spark line for each one of these in turn. So that is something I had to create separately. And I also did a video earlier this year. Um, I showcased a lot of the templates and SVGs that also Carrie Kalosko has done. So I'll link both her website, but also the video that walks through how I created this SVG image in a wider view box but for the video that we're doing here, essentially I will just mention that four SVG measures had to be created and then they had to be added to this card visual one at a time. So what you'll do, if you wanted to add one for the sales card, you would do sales here and the magic comes in play where we go down to image and notice you have an image type, image URL. And this here is where you can actually go to that folder that I just showed you and you can add the spark line or sales right there. And adding that into here, you can do that one card at a time. So I can add it to my sales sparkline and then in turn, I can go do that for my prior year, my year over year and my year over year sales. So there is a little bit of effort that goes into building this out because you do need per card, some individual SVGs that are built up for each of those calculations. There's no way to have one SVG that dynamically fetches the data from the card itself, but we are obviously at the infancy of this new visual, so I'm sure in the next six to 12 months, many more features and automations will come out for it. But that is something that's needed for now, and I essentially did that for every single one of these series. I added it in there, my prior year, and each of these in turn, and then from there, I basically determined the size of it. So if I was to drop that down to 60, you can see that it gets a lot smaller. So you can basically increase the size of there we go, the SVG image to fit the area into here and choosing where you can also place it. So you have a bit of design um, considerations to go in with that, but it allows you to have a bit of freedom and creativity when building this out. So we have the image in there utilizing SVG. Also, we have a few options for the shapes, just like with our other uh, card visuals. I chose rounded rectangle to give it a little bit of that corner smoothing in the edges. And then I also utilized something called the accent bar here where I'm gonna apply that to all of my series, where I can position it either top, left, bottom, or right between any of these, depending on where I wanted that accent to show up. But you have control over that and the width, they give it a little bit of a design element or flair as you'd prefer for whatever your reporting and aesthetic requirements might be. The last couple things that I also wanna call out as well is a beautiful thing that is related to the callout. So notice again, the decimals here are all being leveraged with this. I do have the auto scaling measure that was done in a previous video a few weeks back, that's doing the bottom two where those decimal places change it. But also check this out, something that I've been waiting for for a long time. These top two ones are just my standard sales calculations and prior year. So how are those labels automatically changing? So check this, if we come over to the call out value and we go to series sales, notice that I have a value decimal places. I can now use an F of X button in here. Clicking that, 
I can use decimal places value that is being driven from a what if parameter. So instead of just having fixed decimals, I can now harvest a number from a slicer to automatically change the number that goes here. And I have this all the way up to four, all the way down to zero, but I can control that, put the FFX symbol there, and I apply that to my sales and my prior year. And that's how these are able to change dynamically. So we've never had a visual that could do that before. So I love that the decimal places now has conditional formatting from a measure that can be applied. And I will say every time you see this symbol, give consideration to what could be made dynamic. Lots of ways to do KPIs. The value, the color for it can be changed if you'd like to. The blank value can be changed dynamically. So it's a great indication when you see that f of x icon that something could maybe be modified dynamically based off of data and filtering and slicers. So a lot of creative options for those. But overall, a lot of really great features to be able to customize the callout, both with the design and formatting here. You have the layout, which can be configured either vertical, horizontal, or grid as well. Many different use cases for that. And then the cards themselves have so many different options between all of these just to start with. And again, this is the very first month this has been released. I generally prefer more of a flat or a matte finish. So that's usually why I don't do the border shadows and glows. It adds just a bit too much as far as aesthetic flair. So I like to keep it short, simple, and sweet. But I also wanted to leverage some of the other skills that I've done in previous videos to really make this stand out and shine. And one thing I forgot to mention, last but not least, we actually come over to my time intelligence calculations here and take a look at the year over year sales KPI. The way I'm actually able to get those icons are just a simple calculation where I have a couple of variables to do an upwards trend and a downwards trend. And a little bit of that auto scale formatting that's being applied into here, again, based off of that auto scale video that I've done. So if you wanna know more about the measures and the tutorial for those, check out that other video, link down below. But Basically, I just do a switch statement where if my metric, which is my year over year sales percentage, if it's greater than zero, show this value with an uptrend, otherwise with a downward trend. So either of those two little icons next to it, they either show up or down depending on what the scale is for either of those. So that's how I was able to add the KPI icons into that measure as well. But just to wrap up, again, big thanks to Miguel and team for doing such an awesome job getting these out. I've been happy to be a part of the community of experts helping him drive this initiative forward, providing feedback and making sure we can get some stellar, amazing visuals out for Power BI. I know there's a little bit of work involved in getting this out the door initially with some of the SVGs and other stuff you have to build into it. But again, this is the first month in preview this is being released. I'm sure we're gonna get lots of more features coming off of this card visual and it's gonna be continuously uh, providing more and more robust features that are easier to use. But it is a great start to, I think, a lot of changes that are coming out and. I'm sure most of you will agree, if not all of you, that the single card visualist needed a revision for a long time. And having all of these that can be added in one visual without having to use multiple cards is a big improvement. So kudos to that team. Check out some of the links below to my other videos that show how to walk through the DAX or the SVGs, again, that I've uh, built for that video and also that Carrie Colosco helped to design. So check out all those links below and check out her blog as well. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this, check out some of our related content here in the upper right. Other great videos on my channel that I hope you'll like as well. Drop some comments down below if you liked this video, have any suggestions for this or future videos, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video.